Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to day two of our Lego DC Comics Week podcast. Today we're looking at one of these stranger Lego movies, <laughs> Gotham City Breakout. Fighting crime is a full-time job and Batman never takes a vacation. That is until he finally agrees to let Batgirl and Nightwing take him on a long overdue trip, leaving Gotham City under the watchful eye of the Justice League. And everything goes wrong. Yes, and we do mean e everything. <laughs> Everyone has a lower IQ in this movie for some reason. <laughs> so, Gotham City Breakout yeah. does not live up to the title. No, because you were expecting, if you saw on our, our first podcast for this themed week, mm -hmm. uh, we've re reviewed the Lego DC Superheroes Unite, which was based off the Lego Batman video game, and they attached the cutscenes and new animation together. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one had the villains break out. And, uh, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were all calling their rampage and to put them all back in the, the asylum. Which is uh, what you would expect when it says break out. Yes. But it didn't happen here. No. Uh, they, no, a uh, Joker got out and then that's it. And everyone else gets out later. <laughs> it's like, that, that's it? That's not a break out? That's just... Called? Joker breaks out. <laughs> You're more accurate. <laughs> and yeah, the whole point of this one is that uh, you uh, you from the description, it kind of sounds like uh, the Justice League watches over Gotham City while Batman takes a break. Right. It's his bat birthday, so he goes on a little <laughs> vacation. No, he doesn't want to go on vacation. He's kind of dragged. Not just a regular birthday, but a bat birthday. He's got to be dragged <laughs> to vacation because no one wants to do it. And he has no surprises because he figures out everything in, the, like, five seconds. <laughs> Almost every surprise that Bad Girl and Nightwing has. And Robin. Yeah. Which it was the... Tim I th Robin? I think they did Tim Drake. Yeah, yeah. it was the red outfit. So, yeah. yes, it was Tim Drake. Right. Uh, and, and, and <laughs> Which was weird because the Tim Drake red uniform, he was older. And then he became Red Robin. But in here, he was younger. So, they kind of... Switched it. Yeah, they yeah. It's just... it's weird. It's kind of weird how some of the versions do that, but it's clear that it's Tim, or right. they just leave it at Robin's. Like, okay, you decide. You just know it's not Dick Grayson. Well, you knew from the color of the outfit plus the mask that it's definitely Tim. Right. <laughs> so uh, this one had a lot of characters in it. We had we didn't have the entire Justice League though. We had Superman, Cyborg, and Wonder oh, Woman. Oh no. Uh, sorry. I kept saying that, but I meant Damian Wayne. Oh, yeah, the green mask. We were thinking of the you, other one. Right, and I kept telling you, the look at the bottom of the mask. So, forgive us. We were thinking of the DC United, but no, we are on another it is podcast, Wayne. so it's Damian Wayne. Right. And Damian Wayne in this one wasn't as, wasn't as brooding and as serious as he normally is. Right. It made him more lighthearted for this particular right. DC Lego movie. Right. And so got sorry, before, you don't have to correct us now. We've made our own correction. Right. We saw the mask. We're like, no, that's Damian Wayne. That's not Tim. Right. So, sorry. And uh, we also had other characters in here. Uh, we had, of course, we had Bane, we had Deathstroke, Scarecrow, even though some of them didn't do that much. Uh, we had... And they had the Teen Titans, except for... Raven. Raven, which didn't make sense. We were like, yeah. where's Raven? Yeah, that was weird. And it was weird because Tara Strong was in here mm -hmm. doing the voice of Harley Quinn. They had everybody in the Teen Titans cast come back. Mm -hmm. I think that's why they said in there, some of the Teen Titans are like, yeah, you're missing one. And it's never explained why. They just did that. It was so, more like most of the Teen Titans. Yeah. You should, teen Titans except Raven. Yeah, like minus one. Teen Titans, right. minus one. <laughs> and they still had Greg Sipes and Carrie Payton and Heinen Walsh as Beast Boy, Cyborg, and Starfire. But they also did a little shout out. Even though it wasn't the Dick Grayson Robin, they still had Scott Menville do this Robin. So there was kind of like a little inside joke. And oh, why don't you want to come hang out with us? We can eat pizza. Right. It's like there was always a joke <laughs> and a shout out to the Teen Time Shows because they're always in a show together at half the time when it comes to DC. Right. And this one was made later. This was what, 2016? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. As you said, you definitely have Tara Strong. And you have the uh, regular Teen Titan voice actors. And you had your favorite Tom Kenny as Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Jason V. Zach was the Joker this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kid Flash. Which is different for him, yeah. Which right. Is and we also had, like, sort of a newcomer. We had uh, Amy Hill as Madame Mantis. Mm -hmm. 
So and Sarah Highland's Batgirl. So she was perfect for Batgirl. Her uh-huh. voice was, was perfect for this character. Well, if they used her anymore in the you know the DC universe that we're not aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so for the plot, like I said, we were expecting, you know, while Batman is gone, the Justice League watch over Gotham, they take care of all the bad guys for him while he's away. Mm-hmm. Well, two things wrong with that. One, not everybody broke out. They didn't break out till like later. It was the Joker with a spoon, and he outsmarted well, Superman. And on it like, um, on Ed and Eddie. Yeah, the, the plank. Piece of wood yeah, plank with and, the face on and it. And somehow he managed to. Maybe outs- it was an homage. Right, maybe. <laughs> and it was sort of a shot. It was a. Uh, uh, he, he somehow outsmarted Superman, who, oh, he has no powers. Uh, it's cool. I can handle this. Uh, it might be hard for some non-powers, but I have powers. I can handle them. And then he screws up everything. Then he actually releases all the villains, and they all go on a ramp, and he's like, okay, don't tell Batman about this, please. <laughs> and he's like, can you just come here? Don't tell one woman. Don't tell Jelly. Don't tell Batman. We can handle this. <laughs> of course he finds out anyway, and he knows exactly what happened. Yeah. So it was uh, what I did like about this particular movies you had two different plots you had the one subplot as you said superman and the justice league trying to save gotham city uh-huh. you had the other with batman nightwing and batgirl who despite the fact he's supposed to be on a relaxing vacation he end up running into these underground beings that are wreaking havoc so he still didn't get a vacation yeah what the movie they called the they got, they got a character called, they had they the character. It looked like Frankenstein. That's yeah. what they actually look like. They're called like. Trogawag? I'm like, Trogawag. what the heck yeah, did that Trogawag. come from? But uh, the thing is, the title says Gotham City Breakout. Uh, they didn't really focus on that in this movie. It should have been called something else, because mm-hmm. way more focus was given to Batman on his not vacation. And then the Gotham City breakout part was a subplot, so they kind of switched it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they couldn't think of a title to support this plot, and they just got that one to be more of a ratings grabber. Joker gets out while Batman goes away. Yeah, the Batmobile <laughs> lost his wheels. Like, that sounds dull. <laughs> right? The Batmobile lost his wheels, and the Joker got away. Yeah. That's, that's, it. that's it. But it was, it was entertaining. It was fun. The int- the more interesting subplot I would have to say for me was Batman on vacation, right? And how they had these messages that were built into it. How his original training, his master, was captured, and a travel walk pretending to be the master. Yeah, and they were trying to save the world from the Trogawags, and they were trying to save the king of the Trogawags, yeah, and who fell to... for Batgirl, yeah. and then he had to help them do the bat scene. Yeah, it was, it was like, like... It was really weird. <laughs> Man, it also had Deathstroke mm-hmm. and Bane working together in here, and Deathstroke was kind of like a small brat almost in his version, <laughs> but still a threat. He, she kept calling him Stroke Death, and like, that's not bad! <laughs> and what's interesting when... um. Actually, Mama reminded me that this was actually Batman's original master. Later on, for some reason, we changed to Ra's al Ghul. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe because he was more uh, threatening. It would make for a more interesting backstory mm-hmm. with a villain actually helping the creation of a superhero, I guess. But it was uh, re- like a good refresher to see that he had a whole different backstory. And this one actually was interesting. I'm very surprised they went this route rather than go to Ra's al Ghul. And they had some, you know, some of the things were... Are were intertwined and mixed as well because if you remember and those of you who've seen Batman Beyond she actually appeared in that series right and it was like in flashback yeah and they're like wait a like wait a minute wow that's how you got trained and and that was new because uh, I think she was she was she still around like to train Terry because they're like she lived a day she lived a while yeah he took I think he did take him there to be trained by her. So, yeah. yes, yeah. that's what they were referring to with her with the cane and so forth. Yeah, yeah we come like, man, she's still around. So that was really creative of them to go this far. And that's one of the great things about Le- the Lego DC Universe. No matter what you think of the uh, movies, whether you love them or you hate them or whatever opinion you have, mm-hmm. they really do their best to combine everything. Mm-hmm. They give shout-outs to everything. They make fl- references to everything. All all the older series for anime and live action. They have the music, the uh, lines, the dialogue, Bat Tootsie. Mm-hmm. You hear everything. There's a piece of everything for everyone. And even if the kids don't understand it, someone watching it is going to get it. And it's really creative how 
it's a blend of the DC universe. Very true. And still keeps its little kid friendly uh, approach, and it's still fun, but it doesn't talk down to its audience. Absolutely. So there you have it, pretty much what this particular movie was all about. We won't spoil the ending in case you haven't seen it, but if you have seen this Gotham City breakout that was not really a breakout, yeah, let us know what you thought in the comments below. Do you think it lived up to the, its name? What was your favorite subplot? Either Justice League saving the city or Batman on his no vacation vacation. Right. Oh, we definitely also got to give a uh, shout out about the little Legos. He builds his cars, literally. Mm -hmm. He just has something drop off and then the pieces fall to together and then they make the Batmobile <laughs> or they make the Batboat or they make the Bat plane. He's, right. he's literally He literally builds his own stuff. <laughs> and this is normal in the Lego universe. Mm -hmm. And his little gadget thing on the show, like a homing device, right. it's a sticker because he tried to peel it off. It's <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute, you can't peel off your logo. You can't peel off your ass what are you doing <laughs> so you will have as much fun watching this as we did and again if you've seen it let us know what you think in the comments below absolutely so thank you so much for watching and tune in tomorrow for our next lego dc comics podcast i'm Ask entertainment and i'm mom entertainment have a fantastic day peace
flashing lights trying to walk around man who the hell are you what you want to do my man it's on you man it's on you yeah, in my dreams she was my queen a castle in the mountaintops rivers and streams plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket give it to you later